So I think you will all remember Peter, the one who denied knowing Jesus three times and ran away when Jesus was captured. He knew he had let Jesus down and I'm sure he was hurting inside. I remember when I let a friend down by not showing up once. I felt awful and it took ages to get over it. So let's think about Peter for a moment. He knows he let Jesus down and yet he has seen him alive again and is confident that he will see Jesus again. But he hasn't spoken about the night he denied knowing Jesus. Imagine you were Peter. You know you are going to see Jesus again and that the way you let him down hasn't been spoken about yet. Take time to think about it and answer these two questions. What do you think Peter will want to say? What do you think Peter expects Jesus to say? The Bible tells us what happened. So let's listen to someone who was there. Oh, hello. You come for breakfast? I'm sorry, you've missed it. We're just packing up and putting stuff on the boat. We've got a boatload of fish over there, but we need to get off to the market. I tell you, have I got a story for you. Anyway, my name's John. I'm one of Jesus' special friends and disciples. The last few days has been a real roller coaster. Last Friday, it was terrible. We saw Jesus die on the cross and very carefully we, we took him and we buried him in a tomb and rolled a huge great big stone across the entrance and went away. Absolutely miserable. We thought it was all over. Then a couple of days later on the Sunday, some of the women went back to bury Jesus properly. And when they got there, they found that this huge great big stone had been rolled back and they rushed inside to see what was going on and it was empty. And at that point, an angel appeared and said, what are you doing here? Jesus isn't dead, he's alive. And that day and over the next few days, he appeared to all of us. He was, he was alive, he was there sitting with us. You could, you could talk to him, you could touch him. We even, we even had some food with him. We were over the moon. All except for one person, of course, Peter. He's still absolutely miserable. He's so ashamed because, of course, as you know, he told people not just once, not just twice, but three times. He wasn't Jesus' friend. He didn't even know. And even though Jesus was alive, I could see Peter. He was still really, really sad. Well, a few days later, Peter says, I've had enough. Let's go back up to Galilee and go onto the sea and go fishing. And we've been out on the sea all night long. And do you know what? We haven't caught a thing. So we started to row ashore. And then Peter spotted something. There's someone standing here on the shore. And he calls out to us. Have you caught anything? And Peter shouted back. No, we've been out here all night. We haven't caught a thing. Why don't you try and throw your net over the other side of the boat? Well, Peter said, what good's that going to do? The boat's only that wide. doesn't matter if the net's that side or this side. But then we remembered. Something like this had happened before. So we did what the man said. We threw the net over the other side of the boat. And it was amazing. Almost immediately, this net is full of fish. There's so many fish in the net, we couldn't get the net on board. And we had to drag the net ashore. And then it clicks with Peter, who the man is on the shore. It's, it, it's Jesus. And with that, he takes off his coat and wraps it around his waist and he dives overboard and he swims ashore. By the time we get there, dragging this net behind us, we see that Peter is talking to Jesus and Jesus has prepared some breakfast. He's cooked some, some fish and he's baked some, some bread for us as well. He says, bring some of that fish you've just caught. We're gonna have breakfast together. And we all sat down talking to Jesus. Ah, oh, it was amazing. Everyone was so pleased to be with Jesus again. All of course, except for one person, Peter. And he can see Jesus keeps looking across at him. 
when we finished eating, Jesus said to Peter, come with me, let's have a chat. Anyway, Jesus and Peter start walking on the beach and I tagged along behind. And as they're walking along, Jesus starts to ask Peter some questions. He says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know I do. You know I'm your friend. Hmm, that's good, says Jesus. Look after my sheep. Now, he wasn't talking about sheep. He was saying, look after the people that start to follow me. And they walked along a bit further and Jesus asked the question again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Am I really your friend? Yes, you know I am, Jesus. You know I'm your friend. That's great, said Jesus. Look after my lambs. And then they walked her down a little bit further. And then Jesus asked the question another time. He said, Peter, do you love me? Am I really your friend? Oh Lord, why do you keep asking me the same question over and over again? You know that I love you, you know that I'm your friend. Then it clicked what Jesus was doing. You remember, Peter told the crowd that he didn't know Jesus, not just once, not just twice, but three times. And now Jesus is giving him a chance to say, not just once, twice, but three times, that he does know Jesus and he does love him and Jesus is his friend. He realized what Jesus was doing. Jesus had forgiven him and it was okay. And what's more, Jesus is telling him, Peter, you can still follow me. I've still got work for you. Well, from that point on, Peter is over the moon. And you know what? Never again did he tell people that he wasn't a friend of Jesus. In fact, he did the opposite. He traveled everywhere and anyone he, he met, anyone he could talk to, he told them all about Jesus. Anyway, I've got to be going. I've got a boatload of fish down there that needs to get off to the market. When someone does something wrong to us, it's hard, isn't it? It creates many different emotions inside us. Equally, as we have said, if we hurt others, that can cause a lot of emotion inside us as well. I wonder how you think Peter thought about Jesus' response to him. The fact that he forgave him, showed that he still loved him and gave him another chance. Let's take a few moments to pause and think about this. Let us spend a moment now reflecting on how you think Peter thought about Jesus' response to him. The fact that Jesus forgave him and showed him that he still loved him, that he gave him another chance. I'm sure that being given a second chance was an amazing experience for Peter. His head was probably spinning, thinking of all the things he could go on to do and to be, to think about what role he could play in the future. But he must have also been totally blown over, totally amazed at the fact that Jesus just loved him and wanted the very best for him. So as we draw our story to a close now, let's spend a moment being still. And as we're still, let's think of someone who loves us and for whom we are thankful. Maybe you could just picture them in your mind for a moment. Maybe close your eyes and picture them and think about how they show their love for you. In your head, you might want to use words like this. Thank you, God, for... And name the person 
you've pictured in your head. Well, just be still and think about them. Peter went on to achieve many things for Jesus. He spoke continually about Jesus' love and forgiveness. He told people about the Easter story, about Jesus' death and his return to life. And most importantly, of all, he invited people to be friends of Jesus. I wonder what you would like to achieve in the future. Like Peter, I expect you'd hope to achieve many things. So let's finish our exploration of the Easter story with that question. I invite you to take some time to talk about it with others, maybe write it down and like Peter to dream of all the things you could achieve. We look forward to seeing you again soon.